Hello guys, welcome to another video. And yesterday we got another teaser from GGG, and this time it was a pretty juicy one. The TLDR for this teaser was that Veiled Chaos Orbs and Ashling's Betrayal Rewards are going away in favour of a new Veiled Orb, which will drop exclusively from Katarina, and this orb will remove a random modifier and add a Veiled modifier. Jorgin's Amulet to Talisman Craft is being moved from Betrayal to Bestiary, and based on the footage, this is now a random allocation, and you can no longer specify a talisman tier. The quality crafts from Hillock in Betrayal for armor, weapons, and flasks are being removed and replaced. Flasks will now be corruptible. The teaser specifies Valorbs, so we don't know if other methods of corruption will work. Using a Valorb on a flask will grant a random value between minus 10 and plus 10% to quality. Elemental flasks, that's the ruby, topaz and sapphire flasks, are being changed from granting 50% resistance and 20% less damage taken, to 40% resistance and plus 5% to maximum resistance. And that's the topic of this video. This change to elemental flasks in some cases will be very minor, and in other cases will have an extreme impact. Before we get into the examples, I will mention the change from 50% resistance to 40%, because this will have a potential impact as well, as with Flask Effect, this could be the difference of 20% or more resistance, and a lot of Pathfinder builds or Mageblood builds use the Elemental Flasks to cap their resistances. So do keep that in mind. The change from less damage taken to maximum resistances also means that you'll need more overall resistance to cap resistances, but for the purpose of these examples, we'll be assuming that resistances are capped. So let's run through some example setups to see this change in action, starting with the most basic application. A character with 75% resistance that takes 1000 elemental damage. With the old elemental flasks, resistance would mitigate 750 damage, and the remaining 250 damage is lessened by 20%, so the character takes 200 damage. With the new elemental flasks, resistance would be increased to 80%, and resistance would mitigate 800 damage, so the character takes 200 damage. In this example then, the character takes the same amount of damage with the old flask and the new one. Let's add in 50% increased flask effect. With the old elemental flask, resistance would mitigate 750 damage, and the remaining 250 damage is lessened by 30%, and the character takes 175 damage. With the new elemental flasks, resistance would be increased to 82%, resistance then mitigates 820 damage, and the character takes 180 damage. The character with the new elemental flask takes about 3% more damage compared to the old flask, and this is because the breakpoints on flask effect are now few and far between compared to the old elemental flasks. Previously, every 5% increased flask effect would net you an extra 1% less damage taken, whereas now you need increments of 20% increased flask effect for each point of additional maximum resistance gained. For example, at 60% increased flask effect, the character with 75% resistance would take the same damage. With the old elemental flasks, resistance would first mitigate 750 damage, and the remaining 250 damage is lessened by 32%, so the character takes 170 damage. And with the new elemental flask, resistance would be increased to 83%, so resistance would mitigate 830 damage, and the character also takes 170 damage. Okay, let's look at some more in-depth setups, starting with a character that has Saffle's frame equipped, and 60% increased flask effect. With the old elemental flask, resistance would mitigate 790 damage, and the remaining 210 damage is lessened by 32%, so the character takes 143 damage. With the new elemental flask, resistance would be increased to 87%, and resistance would mitigate 870 damage, so the character would take 130 damage. In this example, the new elemental flask setup takes about 9% less damage compared to the old flask setup, and this is because the effective amount of mitigation that maximum resistances provide compared to the actual damage taken becomes greater and greater the closer you get to that 90% cap. So taking the Saffles frame example to the extreme, let's say a character instead has 120% increased flask effect, 
With the old elemental flasks, resistance would mitigate 790 damage, and the remaining 210 damage is lessened by 44%, and the character takes 118 damage. With the new elemental flasks, resistance would be increased to 90%. Resistance mitigates 900 damage, and the character takes 100 damage. In this example, the character with the new flask setup took about 15% less damage compared to the old flask setup. However, the largest impact that this change is going to have is on very high-end Pathfinder or Mageblood setups which use things like Melding of the Flesh to reach 90% elemental resistances, or those setups which use Transcendence with Lore Weave. In both of these cases, the new elemental flasks now provide no additional mitigation, going from providing a sizable less damage taken modifier to providing no additional benefit to those builds which either already have 90% maximum elemental resistances, or have their maximum resistances locked by Law Weave. The new elemental flasks are also devastated by elemental penetration. Let's do an example with a Shaper Ball that deals 13,000 cold damage and has 25% cold penetration on a character that has 75% cold resistance and 80% flask effect. With the old Sapphire Flask, resistance would mitigate 6,500 damage, and the remaining 6,500 damage is lessened by 36%, and the character takes 4,160 damage. With the new Sapphire Flask, cold resistance would be increased to 84%, and therefore resistance would mitigate 7,670 damage, and the character takes 5,330 damage. So the setup with the new Sapphire Flask in this example takes about 28% more damage than the old Sapphire Flask setup. The new Ruby Flask does pose some interesting potential for the Chieftain's Velaco Notable, especially in addition to the Traitor Timeless Keystone, and equally there's some potential there now for using the Traitor in combination with Melding of the Flesh and a Flask Effect Boosted Elemental Flask on another Ascendancy freeing up space for other gear options. Overall, the flask changes are a huge nerf to the top end of defensive Pathfinder and Mageblood setups, which have outright lost a giant less damage taken modifier. This will impact the meta for Valdo's map farmers and uber boss farming builds. At entry level, the changes are minimal, and in some more niche setups, these changes can be a small buff. And against elemental penetration, the new elemental flasks are considerably worse. The changes also provide some potential for chieftain and melding of the flesh on other ascendancies. Thank you to my patrons for your support. If you'd like to support this channel, you can check out the link to the Patreon in the description below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.